In this tutorial video, we're going to be having a look at the Pythagorean identities for the reciprocal trig functions. So we're all familiar with this first one that we learned, the Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta identical to 1. Well, we can actually generate two more involving the reciprocal trig functions if we just simply divide by sine squared theta and cos squared theta. So let's do the first. Let's divide by sine squared theta. We end up with sine squared theta over sine squared theta plus cos squared theta over sine squared theta is identical to 1 over sine squared theta. So tidying this up a bit, that clearly becomes 1 plus, well, sine over cos is tan, so cos over sine must be cot, so cos squared over sine squared must be cot squared theta is identical to, well, 1 over sine is cosec, so 1 over sine squared is cosec squared theta. So we've got another trig identity there, 1 plus cot squared theta is identical to cosec squared theta. Doing it again, so sine squared theta plus cos squared theta identical to 1. If this time I divide by cos squared theta, I end up with sine squared theta over cos squared theta plus cos squared theta over cos squared theta is identical to 1 over cos squared theta. That's tan squared theta sine over cos plus, well, anything divided by itself as 1 is sec squared theta. 1 over cos is sec. So we've generated two more trig identities regarding the reciprocal trig functions by simply dividing the original one by sine squared theta and then dividing it by cos squared theta. So let's have a look at this exam question which puts into context what we've just learned. So there's the two new trig identities we've learned. So first of all, part one, write down a formula for cos 2x in terms of cos x. Cos 2x in terms of cos x. Well you just simply need to learn this. It's 2 cos squared x minus 1. We can actually generate this if you want by rewriting cos of x plus x, cos of 2x as cos of x plus x then expanding using the compound angle formulae but it's best just to learn it. So I'll cross that out for now. That one's not relevant to what we're doing now. So part 2, prove the identity for cos of 2x over 1 plus cos of 2x is equal to that. So these proof questions con uh, confuse students quite a lot. What we should always do is start with the left hand side. So let's copy that down. 4 cos 2x over 1 plus cos of 2x. And not actually refer to the right hand side at all until the very last line. We're trying to take the left hand side and manipulate it so that it becomes the right hand side. So I'm not even going to write the right hand side down yet. That should be my very last line. Well, in the first part, we expanded cos of 2x. So we can use the work that we've done in part 1 to expand cos of 2x to get that. Over 1 plus 2 cos squared x minus 1. And notice that these 1s cancel each other out. So that becomes 4 lots of 2 cos squared x minus 1 over 2 cos squared x. So the next step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply the brackets on the top out. Now there's no way really of knowing what to do in these types of prove that questions. It's just doing something, then hoping that it works. So if ever you're stuck, my advice is just to do something and hope that it picks up marks. If you do enough different things, chances are eventually you'll come to the right answer. So 8 cos squared x minus 4 over 2 cos squared x. Now looking at what this actually means, this line here means divide. So it means take what's on the top and divide it by what's on the bottom. So if I do that, if I divide the 8 cos squared x by 2 cos squared x, and the minus 4 gets divided by 2 cos squared x, 
hopefully this will get me a step closer to the answer which is equal to well 8 over 2 is 4 and cos squared x over cos squared x is just 1 so it becomes 4 times 1 which is 4 minus well 4 divided by 2 is 2 and over cos squared x the reciprocal the reciprocal of cos squared x is sec squared x so we'll actually prove now what it asked us to prove finally part 3 solve for naught to 2 pi that equation there well notice we've just expanded that in part 2 so we get 4 minus 2 sec squared x being equal to 3 tan x minus 7 now we've actually tackled questions like this in AS for sine squared and cos squared actually it's slightly more difficult now because it we're involving the reciprocal trig functions but we've actually just learned at the start of this tutorial an identity that will allow us to change sec squared x into tan squared x's then allow us to solve this as a quadratic so we can see here that sec squared theta is tan squared theta plus 1 so if we replace the sec squared x with tan squared of x plus 1 which this identity allows us to do that being equal to 3 tan x minus 7 then we can start multiplying it out and treat it like a hidden quadratic so 4 minus 2 tan squared x minus 2 don't forget the minus sign at the front equals 3 tan x minus 7 so manipulating that a bit more take everything over to the other side so we've got 2 tan squared x taking that over to there plus 3 tan x then I'm going to add 2 to bring that up to minus 5 then take 4 to bring it to minus 9 equals 0 and solving this using our quadratic solver polynomial degree 2 so 2 tan squared x plus 3 tan x minus 9 so one of the solutions is tan x equals 3 over 2 and the other solution is tan x equals minus 3 so we've got two equations to solve for that now so let's take 3 over 2 so x equals the inverse tan of 3 over 2 now it's a radians question so we've got to make sure our calculator is in radians mode so shift set up angle unit radian okay so the inverse tan of 3 over 2 is 0.9828 equals 0 0.9828 and the other one, the inverse tan of minus 3. So the inverse tan of minus 3 is equal to minus 1.249. Minus 1.249. So drawing the graph. in our valid region which is 0 to 2 pi so 0 1 half pi 2 halves pi 3 halves pi and 4 halves pi going up in half pies we see that 0 0.9828 is positive so it's roughly there so we've got another we've got a solution there and another one there which is pi away from that so pi plus 0.9828 is equal to 4.12 to 3 significant figures 4.12 to 3 significant figures we can see here the minus 1.249 isn't on our graph but if we extend the graph backwards to accommodate that you see it's roughly there so that leads there to two different solutions which are 1.249 to the left of a zero point 
So the next zero point is pi. So pi take 1.249. So pi take 1.249 equals 1.89. Three significant figures. And 2 pi. 2 pi take 1.249 equal to 5.03 5.03 three significant figures so let's conclude now with all the valid answers we decided that one wasn't valid so x equals 0.9828 which is 983 to three significant figures We've done that one next one in order is 1.89 got that one 4.12 got that one and 5.03 got that one making our answers prominent there we go there's all of our answers for more videos like this subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to a